Good morning. It is great to have you join with us in worship this morning, live from the sanctuary at Mishawaka First United Methodist Church. Just a couple items for you for our congregation and people of the community. First of all, keep watch in communications from us as we will be scheduling our next pull up and pick up. We'll be working with items from our Ash Wednesday service that will be live streamed on Ash Wednesday. There'll be a daily Lenten devotional. There'll be some additional items. There'll also be individual containers of ashes for you to use in the imposition of ashes on Ash Wednesday during that live stream service. Many of you have already returned your pledge cards to us. We thank you for that. That helps our ministry team of stewardship and finance uh, to raise and pay attention to the resources and for us to handle those in an appropriate manner. We encourage those of you who've not yet responded uh, to do so. It helps us to understand where we are and where we're moving forward in ministry for Jesus Christ. Today, see what Jesus' conversation with Nathaniel, a drive through incursion at Panera Bread, have in common with you. What will you discover about God? What will you discover about the ways in which God works? What ways will you discover God working in your life today? And now I invite you to join in our hymn this morning. This hymn, Morning Has Broken, speaks of creation and the activity of reconciliation of God. I invite you to pray with me this morning. Lord of creation, Savior of the world, God of eternal presence, Holy Spirit, our guide. We come to you this morning in the midst of life and living in times that have been stressful and difficult, tumultuous. We ask now that you help us to take that deep breath. And in these moments, allow that which surrounds us in our environments to be dimmed that we might listen, that we might sense more clearly your presence and your direction 
your voice as it comes to us in its many varied ways. This morning, whether we hear your voice in the direct scripture, whether we hear and sense your presence in prayer and the affirmation of faith, whether the tones of the music and the words of the lyrics speak into our heart. Lord, we are opening ourselves today, not just wanting, needing to know you deeper and more greater. For we seek faith that does more than just simply Help us to understand. We seek faith this morning, Lord God, that we might trust in you and live powerfully for your kingdom. We pray for those in our front lines of health care, our first responders in EMS and fire department and police. For they come into the midst of of the fray, they seek to bring healing and calm, enough distance that we might slow ourselves and find the healing that is necessary in mind, in body, and in spirit. We ask, Lord God, for your healing hand and presence to be on us, for we know that there is always the opportunity for cure through your touch, your word, the wind of your spirit moving in and through us. And sometimes, sometimes in the midst of this, there is a physical healing as well. Lord, we ask for your guidance. We ask that you build our trust in you, that in listening to you and following you, we would become less anxious and fearful. We would calm our anger. And we would remove violence from our nature and action. We ask and we pray this in your name. Amen. I invite you to join in our affirmation of faith today from Romans 8 verses 35 and 37 through 39. It will be on your screen before you. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or pandemic or sword? No, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. And the people would say together this morning, Amen. I invite you to join us in responding to these words of presence and steadfast love as we sing together, great is thy faithfulness.
Today, we want to share with you a video of our fig leaf ministry. One of the ways that we are disciples in our community is a clothing ministry in which our guests are able to come and to shop. And when they check out, as you'll hear Barb say, there is no monetary cost to them. Listen and hear some stories from Barb and the fig leaf. Welcome to the Fig Leaf Boutique Ministry. This is a place where people in need can shop, truly shop with dignity. But however, when they go to check out, they find out instead of a bill, they receive a card in which it tells the date in which they may return, as well as all of our church information. We also ask them if they need prayer requests and almost 100% of our people will fill out a prayer request for Kathy. Then we get these to Kathy Black. There are so many stories and God moments in this particular place. I cannot go through all of them right now, but we have experiences with people living in a car or people who have had a child murdered or someone who just lost their job. There are so many of them. However, I'd like to concentrate on just our most recent one. And this is a, young, a woman who has recently gained custody of her grandchildren. Her husband passed away. So with coordination with Help With Love, we provided shoes and clothing and two winter coats for this woman so that she could have clothes to wear to her husband's funeral. You can see in the face of our people an actual transformation. We read these words being the hands and feet of Christ, but we really truly feel transformed and know how that feels. These are the kind of people that we have in our store. They can be so sad, but at the same time, we can hear children laughing we can hear women and men singing gospels while they are shopping. It's an amazing feeling to really know what it is like to be the hands and feet of Christ. The feeling is so awesome, joyous, and peaceful. And I have to tell you of a person who left one day and said to me, God bless you and thank you for being nice to me. I left me speechless. Thank you, Barb, for those tremendous words this morning. Barb and our team who work at the Fig Leaf have collected and shared over 15,000 articles of clothing as you heard her describe the variety of our community people who come and are able uh, to receive. Would you pray with me this morning uh, as we consider the kind of giving that we do during this pandemic time, both to and through the ministry of Mishawaka First, the kind of giving you do for God on a daily basis? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your generosity that pours into us and from our hearts the desire to serve you and to lead in a powerful way as we serve in your name with love and grace and mercy. Make us aware this week of the opportunities to live for you and to share bountifully for you. In your name we pray. This morning, Dave Carew sings for us, I want to walk with Jesus. And as we prepare to hear our scripture, Think about the ways in which you may be curious and open in your walk with Christ. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. All along my pilgrim journey. I want Jesus 
to walk with me. In my trials, Lord, walk with me. In my trials, Lord, walk with me. Thank you, Dave, for that beautiful, moving ministry in music. Barb Schaefer at the Fig Leaf reads for us from the Gospel of John today. Barb, we're excited to hear God's word for us, and uh, we listen as you speak it. Okay, I am reading John 1, 43 through 51 from the NRSV. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite with, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Verily, truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. I wonder what a visit in the drive through at Panera Bread last Monday the scripture that you heard Barb read for us today have in common. And I wonder if you're wondering perhaps what that might have to do with you. I want to start with a couple of questions besides those. I want to ask you what, what you believe, what you think must be present for you to have a discovery. It could be just an aha moment. It could be a spiritual discovery. It could just be one of those things about life that if you grab a hold of two Splenda packets uh, together and tear them at the top, that you can cut in half the number of time it takes to put your sweetener on whatever it is you want. Maybe that's not life-shaping, but it's a discovery. What do you have to have present? For you to have those aha 
moments. Last week on Monday, Ray and I were over in Goshen for uh, her last uh, blood draw and test uh, for her cancer treatment uh, before we go to those kinds of things that they do in follow-up. But this is a regular routine with chemo. So they test your blood to find out what levels you have, you, if you can begin that next step in chemo. And so we've been doing that for well over a year now. And uh, it's our practice when we have one of those early morning appointments uh, to uh, stop by Panera Bread in Goshen on uh, US 33 there between Goshen and Elkhart. We drove up and pulled right up to the uh, voice box there for the window on the back side of uh, the Panera Bread there. We gave our order and then drove around the corner of the building and there was only one car there at the window and thought, at least internally, I thought, well, hopefully this will go pretty quickly then because I was interested in getting home, eating, and then getting into the home office uh, to begin the week on Monday. And there we sat. And there we sat. After a little while, Ray and I looked at each other. We kind of joked about maybe this individual ahead of us was buying for an entire business. Maybe there were 50 or 60 people on that order because it didn't seem as if anything was happening. And we sat. And we sat. Finally, in my mind, I was thinking, is there a cow around here somewhere that they are milking so that they can have half and half in their coffee this morning? I saw no cow. Waited longer. Finally. Finally. It may surprise my children. I did not time it. I've been known to do that. But anyway, finally, the car pulled away. We pulled up. I had my debit card ready. And I held it out the window to the young gal working the window. And then she looked at me and looked at the card and she said, Oh, no. No. The car ahead of you paid for yours. Oh, I got to tell you, there were only two people, well, maybe the gal. There were only two people that I think could see that I shrank to about two foot high. I thought, oh, man, here I was in my mind complaining, griping, having a little bit of sourness, you know, because my day is taking longer to really get started. And, and, and lo and behold, somebody pours out an act of grace upon us. Ray and I happened to look at each other just about the same time and, and you could see it I think probably between us and our eyes and I think almost at the same time we said to each other, do you want to do that and keep it going? And so when the gal handed us our food, I handed her our card and said we'd like to pay for the car behind us. It was a total act of graciousness. It was a breath of fresh air. The kind of air that when it comes through, cleans everything out. And it was if the tension of the polarity of our time, the tension of dealing with cancer treatments was lifted in those moments by that act of grace, by someone paying forward a goodness and a graciousness out of generosity. Ray and I had not done anything positive for the car in front of us. We did not get out and wash their windows. We didn't check the air in their tires. We didn't do anything that could have been counted as deserving someone paying for our meal. That's an act of grace. In fact, it's what Jesus does. It's what Jesus continues to do today. Paying it forward. Always seeing opportunities in which one can be the gracious presence, can be the mercy living in fact with a type of openness that seeks. In our story today that Barb read for us, Philip is 
encouraged as he encountered Jesus the day before. That's the scripture reading before that. As Philip encounters Jesus, Philip is one of John the Baptist or John the Baptizer's disciples. He's one that Jesus had interacted with and had said to him, come and see. There is a kind of invitation to curiosity. There is an invitation to openness. There is an invitation to seeking and to discover. What do you have to have in your environment in order to make a discovery? An aha moment. Something that transforms how you see and perceive life. So powerful that it shifts and changes attitude and character and understanding. Philip, in turn, goes to Nathaniel, someone that he knows from Bethsaida. And he invites Nathaniel to meet this Jesus, this Jesus of Nazareth. And it's interesting because Nathaniel carries a little bit of an attitude that I carried in the drive through at Panera Bread. I can see it now. Two friends, Philip, Nathaniel. Philip saying something, hey, we have found the guy who is the Messiah. We've found the one who is most important, the one we've been waiting for. And Nathaniel. Nathaniel, because he hears that Jesus is from Nazareth, closes his mind, and the words that come out of his mouth are, what good can come out of Nazareth? What good can come out of sitting in a line at Panera Bread for what seemed like hours? What good can come out of a pandemic? What good can come out of the polarity that we find ourselves in, not just simply in our United States, but around the world? What good can come from that which we belittle, maybe even despise, and unfortunately, for some, hate? What must be present in your reality today for you to discover the graciousness, the healing presence of God. One of the things that we've learned about Ranger, our golden retriever, is that he is an excitable dog, to say the least. It's a great thing that he loves people, but I, I know that there are people when they've observed him in his excited state are not so sure as I am that what he wants to do is just simply to go and greet them and play with them and chase around in the yard with them. They're pretty certain that it's the sounds he makes and the speed at which he approaches them that he has evil intent in his heart. I want to tell you there's not really an evil bone in his body. But how, how do you discover when you sense threat that really there's an act of grace about to happen. I can't tell you how many people that Ranger has charged up to, and as he gets to them, he slams the brakes on, and his tail is just going crazy, and it's just like, play with me, play with me, play with me. I am your friend. What must be present in your environment, your life? For you to be open, to be listening, to be sensitive. Nathaniel interacts with Jesus. And Nathaniel, in speaking to him, and Jesus speaking back to him, begins to see something that he hadn't sensed before. I like the little bit, it's just a sliver of curiosity. He says to Jesus, how did you know me? How do you know me? I saw you while you were sitting underneath the fig tree. 
saw you when you were standing in line at Walmart. I saw you while you were working on the line at AM General. I saw you when you were playing in your front yard with your family. Here's something that I think we, we miss at times, and that is that God already knows you and me. God already knew Nathaniel. Jesus already knew Nathaniel's heart. And it wasn't so much about seeing the physical presence of Nathaniel under a tree. And in fact, if you just simply stop with that physical piece, you don't go very deep. You don't see beyond the surface level to realize that Jesus is saying to Nathaniel that in fact there's something going on in Nathaniel that has an honesty to it that has a character of faith to it, that has a degree, even though he is skeptical, has a degree of faith. And when Nathaniel begins to interact and hear, he begins to discover. He begins to have the closeness of his life opened up. How many people in our relationships today do we close off because they match criteria for us to discard them, to ignore them, to distance ourselves from them? What does what has to be present in your environment for you to discover, to have revealed the power of grace leading to faith, developing trust, bringing harmony in the primary relationship that we have in life, and that is our relationship with our Creator. That trusting in that relationship, we find healing. And sometimes, physically, we find a cure. I really didn't expect a relationship at the drive through at Panera Bread to contain the evidence of the scripture from the Gospel of John in the first chapter. I didn't expect that those words that Jesus tells Nathaniel in the 50th verse where he says, Nathaniel, if you think this is an interesting discovery and, and a development of your faith, just wait because there is going to be so much more that you can see Jesus saying to him that the openness and curiosity that you have in seeking Christ. Remember that scripture, seek first the kingdom of God. That you will see more and more and more. And then I consider those words that we hear. That Jesus says to us, they're astounding words. It's in the 14th chapter of John, it's the 12th verse. And he says, you're actually going to do greater things than I. That's the Rick Taylor shortened version of that verse, just so you're clear. Those are astounding kinds of words because, my friends, we carry a level of closeness that puts us into a confined box in what we can perceive and see and what we can do for Jesus and the kingdom. Little did we know that part of our closeness it's not so much a matter of protection for ourselves, but it is the limiting of ourselves. And it limits the growth of our faith, and it limits the response of our service to Christ. I wonder 
but it has to be present in your environment for you to make a discovery. i close with this this morning. I queried 17 of our people connected to our congregation. Some of them uh, we see on a regular basis. Some of them are persons that are, are connected and we love, but we don't physically see them, not only in the pandemic, but sometimes don't see them on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. And I asked that question to 17 people. What is it? What has to be present in your reality to make a discovery? I had eight people who responded to me. Do you know that every one of those eight mentioned the word open, openness, verbatim, or a couple of them described, when they responded to me, described openness. Now for me, openness is another way to say the word suspended judgment. It's another way to say grace in that we're going to be listening. In fact, one of our respondents said some words about there needs to be thoughtful listening, discernment, hearing. When we're closed, as I was in the drive through to Panera Bread, while I didn't say it, I thought they were just taking a long time to get an order for one person out in a car. And I could see them back there playing games, chatting with each other, somebody on their cell phone. Meanwhile, my souffle, my spinach artichoke souffle that Ray and I split was going to be colder and colder, let alone the drive home. You see, what's in that scripture isn't just a couple thousand years ago. It's about you and me sitting in a drive through It's about you and me in our home environment. It's about you and me watching the news feed on our cell phones, tablets, computers, and not realizing that the algorithms of those social media sites are feeding us just the same stuff that we've believed. And so there's no challenge to be open. There's only confirmation to feel the way I do. Jesus said to Nathaniel, in essence, your curiosity, your seeking, your openness, and your faith will lead you to see more of the revelation, of the resurrection, and the transformation. My friends, I invite you into grace and openness, into suspended judgment and curiosity and faith. Amen. And amen. This morning as we close, we'll be singing on Eagle's Wings. I want to thank today Gabriel, who is our pianist, Dave Carew, who is our soloist, Galen and Tony Pauls, and Sharon Eberhardt, who are a part of our vocal ensemble for the hymns. Listen, sing along, be drawn into openness, curiosity and faith.
thank you for joining us today in worship to allow God to speak to us in the music, in the scripture, and in the presence of our people gathered together in the virtual and the digital space. I encourage you to take the opportunity to share the link uh, to the recorded version of the live stream today. It will be available in just a little bit. And share that with your friends, your family, your coworkers, your neighbors. It is, I think, a great way for us to, to share the Word of God uh, in a powerful way where people have the opportunity to have a bit of openness in their own space, whether they're in a car, whether they're at their home, whether they're sitting today uh, in a restaurant, uh, whether they're out in a drive through quite frankly, waiting for somebody ahead of them uh, to get their food as well. May the power and the healing and the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ be upon you. May he lift from you the fear and anxiousness that the world can bring today, that you might find harmony and peace in the trust and faith that you carry in our Savior. God bless and God speak. Thank you. 